Good morning, and uh, welcome to our Trapper Rods Outdoor Pursuits. Today we're at a local city lake where they're having some beaver problems. I got a call out from a buddy of mine, uh, and uh, we're going to do some beaver work. Uh, a few things about beavers. First thing about beaver trapping is the traps are big and the traps are pretty dangerous. Uh, you can get caught in them. So the first thing you want to do is get your safety gear and clip it on there. On, a, on this one, I've got a set of uh, conibear safety that I can clip on and off here. I've also got a set of trap setters. Now, I don't exclusively use any trap. I use footholds and I use conibears. And uh, we're going to show you how to set them. And we're going to show you how to put them in the water. And I'm going to explain some of the theories behind them. But uh, let's talk about beaver trapping in general for just a second. Uh, we've got a beaver hut right over here. And uh, in that beaver hut could be just an old, retired bachelor, male or female, uh, that, that's just setting up their, their retirement home. Or that could be a family's den. If it's a family den, you've got an adult pair of beavers. Then you've got the young of the year from last year and the young of the year from the year before. It's December the 7th today of 2020. <laughs> so you've got beavers that are almost a year old and you've got beavers that are almost two years old. Every spring in March, they kick out the beavers from two years ago right before the new litter of beavers is, is birthed. So if this is a family den, we can expect to catch anywhere between five and ten beavers. Uh, we're going to set this pretty hard. We're going to show you a caster bound set. We're going to show you a conibear caster bound set. Uh, we're probably going to eventually show you a, a beaver run set since we've got a lodge right here so close. But we're going we're gonna to hit this hard. We're going to set at least four footholds and at least two or three conibears along here. Because when you're doing animal damage control work, you want to get those beavers removed as quickly as possible. Um, there's very few things smarter than a beaver that has been pinched by a trap and got away. So you want to make your sets with some care. You want to make sure that you get that animal where you want it and end that trap if it's questionable. If you're just out fur trapping, hey, you know, maybe you can set in a couple of sets that, that may or may not catch the beavers. But if you're doing animal damage control work and you want to catch all of those animals, you want to take good care with your sets and make sure that, that, that they're the best sets you can make in that location. So we're going to get to trapping here. We're going to set caster mounds. Uh, for those of you who are uninitiated in the trapping world, uh, you use a caster-based lure. Uh, you can find those at any trap and supply house. And this is the ground up glands of beavers mixed with some other little herbs and spices, if you will. And uh, that makes the beavers very weary and uh, they're very territorial. And, and when you put this strange scent out, they're going to be looking for it. And what they're going to do is they're going to want to cover this scent up. And they're going to replace it with their own as a territorial marking post. So what we're going to do is, is, is we're going to simulate on most of our sets, we're going to simulate a, 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 a inter interloper beaver that has come in here and is trying to set up shop. And he's made a signpost and we're going to, he's saying, hey, this is now my territory. And we're setting up a territorial dispute between the beavers in this lodge and this interloper, which is actually us. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and uh, we're going to be taking a look around. And uh, my my friend Caleb, he's going to be making the set. He may make his first beaver set today, and so we're out here having fun on a nice, bright, sunny December day. Stay tuned. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our conibear traps. So there's several different methods of using. Some people I've used ropes before. Uh, I have one little trap setter that looks like a caulk gun. It's a nice little trap setter. I've got this one. I think this is the bridger. And what it does is it locks. And that's really nice because you're going to need another hand to uh, flip that safety off. So it locks. Then you put your safety on. And then you squeeze to unlock it. Get all your color bears set, and uh, then we'll show you how to set them here in just a minute. 
All right, we're right here down at the beaver's eye level. You can see the dam. You can Well, you can see the uh, beaver lodge. You can see an old beaver run where that leads into this lodge, maybe even a second lodge. It's an older lodge. You can see it kind of built up on top. But right here, you can see an actual beaver little caster mound. And those are perfect. So we're going to set up right in this little pinch point. I mean, you couldn't make a better pinch point for a 330 conibear. So we're going to set up in that pinch point. We're going to set up on this uh, caster mound. Then we're probably going to set a couple of blind sets up in here. And we're going to put some caster around to uh, entice them to come out. They've got a giant feed pile already cut right out here so they're kind of set up for winter but we're gonna mess up their winter plan so we've got this natural little travel way you can see the beavers are coming out that way and you can see a lot of the beavers are coming out this way and if you reach down here you can feel a fairly hard little bottom so that's a perfect place to set a caster set so we're gonna push this out a little bit because in Missouri the traps are supposed to be completely underwater now I will admit that sometimes that doesn't get done all the way because of the way that the, the way that the trap bed is but most of the time you can now most of the time you can do that. Now you get your trap, conibear bear trap set. I usually set them on the inside notch. Uh, the inside notch and the outside notch have nothing to do with speed. They have nothing to do with strength. They have to do with how hard you have to push on that trigger in order to get it to fire. And I want that beaver to be completely committed. Before we go any further, we reach on to our little bag of safety tools. We take our 330 Conibear safety, it works on 280s and 220s as well, and we clip it on there. That way even if this thing does fire, it can't come all the way closed and it can't come any farther closed than our hands. And we're going to set that beaver trap right in there. That's going to be about as good as we're going to get. Then we take some sticks and we stabilize that beaver trap. We go down in between the springs. <laughs> now this is a big old rock clump, so we're gonna have to get kind of tight to these springs there, just like that. And that right there is going to be plenty of guidance for these beavers. Now you can take a uh, little clump. Beavers are used to seeing things in their environment all the time. So you can take a little clump of uh, bark or a another stick and lay it right on top of that uh, conibear. Unlike coyotes, beavers' environments change all the time. They're always having something float in or float away. And they're pretty easy to guide. So we're going to set this right here. And we're going to set this right here. And that's going to make the beaver dive under. We're going to take some of our, some of our uh, lure. And we're just going to dab it right up here. Why up there? Because I don't want that beaver to be able to get to it. What I want that beaver to do is swim back and forth and back and forth trying to find where that scent's coming from. And I want it in a place where he can't find where that scent's coming from. Last but not least, even though these conibear traps are killer type traps, whoops, I may have buried that in the mud. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. 
as luck would have it, I got it through the there, but I put cables on all of my conibear traps so that I can reach around and clip it onto something. There. Now that trap's not going anywhere. It's not going to go past this little knot. And we'll reset up our thing. That ought to have a beaver in it in the morning. All right, here we are at that natural caster mound. And what you can see is that I've slicked up the bank. And I've made a little mud pie. And I got this looking like something's been up and down it. I even like to take, put a few claw marks in it to make it a little more realistic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a foothold trap. Now I have my foothold trap set up on drowners. On every drowner, there's a little piece of wire that goes for our drowner bag. I'll show you that here in a second. Then we have our drowner cable. This happens to be eighth inch cable. Uh, a lot of mine is a lot of my drowners are three thirty seconds cable. The eighth inch seems to hold up a little bit better. You you get more traps out of it. So you take your drowner stake and you squish it in the ground and then this will slide all the way out there to the deep water. We'll show you that here in just a few minutes. So that's the drowner stake and this is a beaver foothold trap. This just happens to be a CDR 7.5. So we get our trap setter out these big beaver traps are extremely hard to set well they're not extremely hard but they are pretty darn hard to set by hand they're definitely not your little uh, 110 conibear or your little 1.5 trap and this trap setter, this one-handed trap setter, I think the old boy lives up in Connecticut, somewhere in the Northeast. And he tells a story about how he was out beaver trapping, and uh, he got himself caught. And he had almost, he fought and fought and fought to get out of that trap, because he had one hand stuck in the trap, and one hand... Uh, actually, I think he said he had both hands stuck in the trap. So he invented this little beaver trap setter so that he could somehow figure out how to get his hands out of that set. And I use them all the time. Now that I've discovered them, I'll put the uh, link to his product in the, uh, in the description. Now, once you've got it set like this, it's pretty darn safe. You've got your dog all the way up under there. You've got your pan setting pretty darn high. You can do what you need to do without having to worry about it. Now I use quick links for, uh, for my connection point. You could use S hooks. You could even use wire. Um, but I've got mine set up with quick stainless steel quick links, which are a little more expensive, but there again, if you keep track of your gear, you only got to buy them once. Slip that on there. Hard to tighten with gloves on. Okay. You've got your setup going there. The next thing you need to know is that ooh, beavers swim with their front legs tucked up under the water and their back legs are paddling. So they'll swim up to here and when they're when they're when their breast hits something solid, that's when they put the landing gear down. So right about here, there's actually a little stick sticking out there which will help me. It'll jab them right in the right in the breast to make them put their feet down. So I go from here 
and then I take my elbow and I put it down there and right in here that's where our trap's going to get bedded so I'll take my stake I'll set it down here drive it in then I take my trap and you'll hear it click if I get it got it tuned right now that trap is set time to be careful now I found when I put my arm down there that I have one of my bootleg holes or boot holes right about where I want it so I got to find that boot hole And then we're going to create a little bit of a depression for this trap to fit in right about there and i'm going to offset it just a hair to this way sometimes a lot of times i'll go to the right so we want that to be just a hair bit lower than the ground around it then we're going to take our trap we're going to have our dog facing that three o'clock position. We're gonna take our trap and we're gonna solidly bed it into the ground. A lot of people think with water trapping that you know grounding and bedding your trap is not nearly as important, but that is not so. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work with our bag. Put these back because if not, I'll leave them here and be looking for them the next place I set a trap. Now I've already got this bag. This is like a basically a an army sandbag, and I found a couple of good rocks that I can put in there. So this weighs 20, 30 pounds. Take my wire, I wrap it around this bag a couple of times, like this, and like that. down carefully get my snap hook I snap it on the bag and I take it on out oh, there it is Take it on out here with some nice deep water. Then I'll come back over here and dress up my set and lure it. We don't want that beaver coming up to the side. Beavers are pretty easy to guide up until they get to be educated beavers. So we're going to take some of this beaver lure. We're going to apply a good dob to that stick, to that stick, and to the very top of our caster mount. Again, these beavers are going to try to mark this, so we want some caster up out of the way so that they uh, put that thorny locust right around here. That's plenty of guidance for a beaver. That's all they need. They're pretty easy to guide. They're not like coyotes. And that's your basic caster mount set.
put your hand in the water to where it hits the bottom, where it comes up to these knuckles, put your elbow on that spot, put your hand out down, that's where your trap needs to go in a little bit of a dish. That's your caster bound set. There ought to be a beaver there in the morning. So we got seven quick sets set up. We got uh, four cotter bear, three cotter bears, and four footholds yeah. set up around this beaver colony here on this little city lake. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't catch at least three to five beavers tomorrow, if there are three to five beavers to be caught. Uh, Caleb set up a couple of them. I set up a couple of them. Uh, we've got a mixture of cotter bear sets and, and foothold sets. Caleb put in his very first caster mound from scratch set and uh, it's a good day out here so we'll uh, come back tomorrow Caleb won't be able to come he's got to go to work but another buddy of mine's going to come run beaver traps with me uh, it's always a good idea to have somebody else with you because beaver traps are a little dangerous but uh, you know I've run them alone a lot of times too so as long as somebody knows where you're going and has a place on the map to start looking for you that's the main thing so we'll see you on part two of uh, this December beaver trapping experience and uh, thank you for stopping by Trapper Rod's Outdoor Pursuits, and God bless.